Welcome back, everybody. And if you're joining us for the first time, thanks for tuning in. My name is Craig. I'm the host here at thepodlife.com, and I am very excited today to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Dr. Kevin Fenton. Uh, Dr. Fenton is the medical director at VCA All Creatures in La Quinta, California. Uh, he is also the owner-operator of the ARC Integrative Veterinary Services. Uh, you can find out more about his services at uh, drkevinsark.com, or you can look him up online at VCA at vcaallcreatures.com. Dr. Fenton practices uh, integrative philosophy of veterinary care, which marries together both Western philosophies as well as things like chiropractic, acupuncture, homeopathy, and other things. And so uh, I think you're really going to enjoy the show. He talked to us a little bit about all of that. He may even stick a needle in his head, but you got to stay tuned if you want to see that happen. And uh, I really hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you on the other side. Dr. Fenton, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm very it's good. good. To see you, man. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for taking the time to do this for us. Uh, I'm glad to do it. I appreciate We've it. We've been around the block together uh, uh, once or twice. There you go. Right. So my name's Craig. I'm the host of the Pod Life, and I'm here today with Dr. Kevin Fenton from VCA All Creatures in La Quinta, California. Uh, so, Dr. Fenton, um, maybe we could start out uh, by learning a little bit about you and your practice. So. Uh, one, you're the medical director here uh, at VCA All Creatures, but you also have an equine practice uh, outside of here. And so maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the type of services that you offer. Mm-hmm. Well, kind of in a nutshell, I started All Creatures back in 1991 um, to do All Creatures. Um, I had a pretty big equine practice, which I had started first in 86 um, and then as as time went on I opened up also a small animal exotic every other thing so it was like right? it was dogs it was cats but it was also turtles and birds Tortoise, and snakes, snakes whatever I would go up to the living desert you know and do relief work up there for them and you worked at the emergency hospital here uh, locally in Thousand Palms oh, at yeah. that time uh-huh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and so then, so started All Creatures in 91, and um, my partner had some health issues in later years, and, and so we decided to sell the clinic, um, and uh, because he had to stop working, and uh, actually sold it to a place called Pet Doctors. I remember. Which I think Greg will remember very well. <laughs> You know, and then next they sold it to VCA. Yeah. And so, um, and I have also maintained the equine practice, though I don't do as much horses as I used to. I, I had a couple of heart issues and I'm supposed to kind of take it easy. Yeah, well, and that's good. So, um, and so what I do do is, is, I do integrative medicine both here in the clinic and outside the clinic. And with horses, um, I do acupuncture, chiropractic, homeopathy, which are all the things that I do in the clinic. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, and I look at those things um, as extra tools in my toolbox. Okay. The road that I've taken has been pretty, pretty torturous, <laughs> you know, and and, um, and so it's really funny that that um, as I was finishing my internship at the University of Tennessee with horses, expecting to go out and get a job, you know, in a big horse practice and whatever, um, there was an advertisement for a job on the job board in the clinic. And it was actually to do embryo transfer in cows oh. in China. Oh, <laughs> and, and this and, this piqued your interest. You right, thought this exactly. could be for me. And and <laughs> I've always liked cows, but that's not the road I had intended on going down. <laughs> but the issue was all I thought about was I could learn 
acupuncture and Chinese, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, because I had always been drawn to that, right? I was a child of the 60s. Yeah. You know, I was, I was trying to find Zen and yeah. things like that, right? And, and so I was psyched and, and I applied for it and yeah, they said, okay. And then at the last minute, they contracted this job out to an international embryo transfer company. Oh, so, yeah. so, so okay, it's not going to happen. And as I practiced, um, I, I did a lot of emergency medicine, um, and I saw everything. And what we have, and thank God we have it, is we have a conventional, technological, amazing capacity to take care of creatures, um, to save them. And, and I would never want to not have those skills. You know? They make me who I am. There came a point where in conventional medicine, um, in traditional veterinary medicine and human medicine. We can do those amazing things. If you get hit by a bus, I want to go. Yeah. To the, I want to go to the place that can put me back together. Sure. The issue becomes when they have saved our lives, when many years ago that would have never happened, and put us back together, that there are a lot of repercussions to those injuries, to that trauma, that we can't treat as well, and 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 we're doing the best we can, right? And and I wanted to see if there was something more, right? Once again, this thought of adding tools to the toolbox, and so all of a sudden I saw that there was an acupuncture course being taught down in San Diego. I'm up here in La Quinta, and it's put on by the International Veterinary Acupuncture Society. Mm -hmm. And I decide, all right, I guess it's, it's kind of an omen, let's do this. Yeah. Right? And so I started acupuncture. <laughs> and um, it and was it, a class. And this was early on in your career? So this, you, was, this was in 1988, okay. you know? Um, and Sometimes I forget exactly what year it was. Yeah, 30 but, years ago. But I'm thinking it was 88, okay, right? Okay, yeah, close enough. Right? And, um, and I still hadn't opened up the small animal practice, right? I did work in the emergency clinic yeah. doing relief work mm -hmm. with, with dogs, cats, and other creatures. And, um, and so I decided to make that leap. And... Um, and it was it was very interesting because in the midst of the course, right, um, all of a sudden somebody came in who had never been here before, um, and and they had a dog that couldn't walk, and they said they had tried everything. They heard that somebody was doing acupuncture, and um, if if that didn't work, this dog was going to heaven. Mm. And and I talked to this man. It was a Labrador. He's a really cool dog. And I, I said, I'm I'm in school. I'm no. <laughs> I'm not I'm the no, pro. I'm not. I'm not an expert, you know. And and he said, Well, can you do something? And I said, Of course. I'm going to try yeah. if if that's what you would want to do. And that's what I would say. I just want you to know that I am no Chinese master. Yeah. You know what I mean. And so I put some needles in this guy, you know, and um, and all of a sudden, you know, he he moved around, and 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 I still, when I look at it in retrospect, didn't believe it then. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this dog was able to walk. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I said to myself, you know, this. Is this possible? Hmm. Because I had taken acupuncture and was thinking about it uh, because 
I had been conventionally trained. Western science, I think, is amazing. Sure. You know? Great technology. Right, exactly. And, 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 and also great compassion, you yeah. know? Um, and there's great people doing it. And, and, and so I was the optimistic skeptic, I called myself, <laughs> about acupuncture. Sure, yeah. Right? That's a, yeah. I wanted it. Cautiously you know? optimistic. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? And so when this dog got up, and I, uh, you were. I was so blown away, and 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 then, always thinking, well, maybe yeah. this would have happened anyway. Yeah, he would have gotten up today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 I said, but I don't know. It's, I think it's, no. It's kind of this is then, it's a little too coincidental. <laughs> and so right? the journey began. Right. Yeah. And 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 that's how it began. It's it, it's really interesting to think about a couple things, but one that comes to mind is that how much we've changed in veterinary medicine. Um, you both of us have some time uh, that goes back far enough to remember when you could do stuff even though you weren't the boarded guy or the trained guy, mm -hmm. right? Like fractures come in and you could fix fractures mm -hmm. even if you weren't a board certified surgeon. Mm -hmm. we and I think in many ways that was really great because it was a time in veterinary medicine where your local veterinarian could could try some things on and help uh, you and you could work together right. as a team and, and it's gotten so litigious now that yeah. it's scary sometimes you know we were just at a meeting you and I talking about what it's like to be a new graduate veterinarian and, and you go into practice and you're terrified because you make one single mistake and it's gonna go on Facebook it's gonna go everywhere oh, and okay. you're you're gonna be the blight and it's a, it's a terrifying time and I and I just Reminisce fondly to being able to start new things that maybe you were just taking some training on and, and you know You were brave to start it and, uh, and I'm happy that that path started for you and that's it's amazing I, I have to I have to tell you a story About the beginning. You know, I went to veterinary school in Italy at the University of Bologna um, And it's a very different education right? um, no, uh, And not in English if I no, recall no <laughs> That's another story. It's in yeah, Italian. Yeah, yeah, right. In Italian. <laughs> and, uh, and that made the road even more interesting. Yeah. But anyway, when I got out of school, right, like any veterinarian, I don't care where you went to veterinary school, in reflection of what you have just mentioned about new graduates being unleashed on the world and being overwhelmed and having all of this knowledge and not a lot of experience trying to minister to these animals and of course to the people that own them right because yeah. they're such an integral part of families yeah and and so i would go into the exam room and i i called it the duck philosophy right that thing where where the ducks on the surface and he looks calm cool and collected and that's how i would try to be as i came in and meanwhile underneath that water i was i was going mock one <laughs> scared <laughs> scared yeah and so then i would tell the owner um you know i think i need to go check something <laughs> and off i'd run out of the room and i'd go to my little hole in the wall office and on the desk and any veterinarians out there will I'm sure relate to this and there was current veterinary therapy opened up there was the Merck, Merck manual, Merck manual. Um, you pick it it yeah. was out there and I would go through the pages get right re get reorganized right? Yeah. back I would go and as I'd be going down the hallway you know I would I would be humming a song by Simon and Garfunkel. I'm only faking it. <laughs> I'm not really faking oh, it. Oh man! And and that's how that's yeah. how it started. And and um, I became a pretty damn good veterinarian, yeah. if I do yeah. say myself. Yeah, you know? I think so. I so, think that's safe to say. But and and that's how it happens. We all we all start with our knowledge base. Um, and we want to be healers, you know, and we 
are in this situation where we don't have a lot of experience. But between your heart and your head and your drive and your compassion for why you're doing what you're doing, we figure it figure out. Figure it out, yeah. If I can figure That's it out, anybody can. There you it. go, there you go. Well, so let me ask you this then. Um, fast forward to today and you know now we're in a different world um and and let's say i'm a client that's uh got something going on with my pet and i'm and i'm interested in considering some of these different therapies how, you know how do i how do i find someone and what are the kind of how, what are the kind of training that's out there today um, you know are there schools that people can go to now for learning you know acupuncture chiropractic um, you know homeopathy. How, yeah homeopathy yeah. how to how to how, how can clients wade through that or you know if I'm interested in and maybe I'm a veterinarian I'm interested in adding on these tools you know what can you tell us about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, it is now something that is not looked at um, as intensely as it had been in the past, that these things are, are a type of voodoo. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, and it, it, there was a stigma oh, yeah, uh, because this, it was not familiar, because right. it, we're all steeped in a right. Western right. philosophy. In, 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 a very at times mechanistic you know but once again with with an incredible health potential but um, in a lot of conventional folks minds you know putting needles in an animal or a person you know that's not evidence-based and 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 that was not the case then yeah and as people at least began to open their, their possibilities that, let me kind of hear what somebody has to, has to say about this. And let me read some of the things that have been written. And, and of course, many things had been and have been and are being written about these modalities. And they do have facts after them. But that's a whole nother sure. sort of discussion. What I think is most important is that if someone wants to improve their armamentarium of, of being able to heal, that, that to add those things is, is a great service both to those creatures and the people that are tied to those creatures and also the part of we as veterinarians that want to heal things and want to do the best we can and that that offers another option to go and complement mm -hmm. these integrative modalities. And so there's, there's the international Veterinary Acupuncture Society mm -hmm. There's the, the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association. Um, there's the AVH, the American Veterinary Homeopathy Association. Um, and so those are the big, the big three that come to mind. And there are now several other courses um, started by other schools of chiropractic, acupuncture, Chi and things Institute. like that. Right, the Chi Institute, I think, is 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 somewhere in the state of Florida. Yeah. You know, and so these are these agencies are they're guiding agencies, regulatory agencies. No, these schools. are schools. These they, are are basically schools. Okay, right. where one would go to be trained. Okay. For example, both the acupuncture and the chiropractic course, I think, I think met, for example, five times in a year for five day blocks of oh, school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then at the end of that, you, you took a practical exam and a written exam. 
and you had to write some papers, some research papers about cases, mm -hmm. and then one became licensed. Mm -hmm. And so, and so that's sort of the general overview for all of these schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so now, your your kind of areas that you tend to to reach for the most in your practice would include chiropractic, acupuncture, homeopathy, mm -hmm. right? There mm -hmm. are other things that we were talking about. There's there are herbs, there are Chinese right. herbs, there's I had laser a, therapy. I have dabbled in Chinese herbs for a while. Um, I don't use them very often now. Um, I do have a cold laser. We use a laser. Yeah. What there about are, nutritional things? Are, are you? Um, where do you come in on that? Are you a more conventional guy? Are you? A, the world of nutrition now <laughs> is so overwhelming. Yes. Both for for clients and I think also for veterinarians. Certainly. You know. Um, and uh, and there are several camps. And I think also that instead of perhaps being as, let's say, to be inclusive mm -hmm. with our colleagues who view, for example, nutrition in a certain way, as opposed to, for example, the, the community of people and veterinarians that think of feeding raw food, which mm -hmm. which has a stigma. I mean, there's so sure. much. And once again, I think instead of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and there's no way that this should happen, I think we all need to be aware, and we all need to be informed. And once again, we all need to think about what might enhance the quality of life and the longevity of these creatures that mm -hmm. we take care of. Well, maybe we can talk a little bit specifically about some of these things. So, uh, chiropractic, for instance, um, how does? How, can you give us some examples of how that's used in your practice? What you know, what kind of a case uh, would you apply that, and, and how does it work for someone who's not really exposed to this? Uh, uh, what happens? Uh. Well, also remember on this website that I have, mm. which I never use like I ought to, I had great <laughs> expectations, but I'm not very organized, <laughs> yeah, as right. you know, You're but I get man. things done, <laughs> just a little crazy. But, um, and so there's a nice explanation there, but, but I'll go ahead and, and, and talk about it. A lot of times what we see as veterinarians is what would be called chronic disease. And once again, conventionally, we can do some amazing things, right? But we can't alter or change or cure some of these, these chronic conditions. And so in those settings, that's how I see a lot of the people that come to the clinic. Because they're kind of at this juncture mm. where their veterinarian is doing the best he can and is doing well, but it's getting to a point where where things are beginning to slip back. Mm -hmm. And and so that's where I see a place for these modalities, number one. But also number two, in the entire life of these creatures. So but but that's how somebody usually comes here. And a lot of times people come here who are of that of that bent as far as I want to treat myself and I treat myself more holistically um, and and so I would like also to have that option for my mm -hmm. dog or my cat or my horse yeah um, I think I, we see this all the time now you know folks are spending a lot of time thinking about uh, you know what they're eating mm -hmm. and you know organic solutions mm -hmm. vegan diets vegetarian diets paleo keto mm -hmm. all those things they're going to chiropractors themselves are having as more of our human population is participating in all this stuff then it's not surprising that it's mm -hmm. starting to radiate more into the care of their own animals which I think is fantastic uh, uh, there's an old there there's an old quotation you are what you eat. I I don't know who said it, but but it's been out there a long time, you know. And 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 so somebody will come in, and 
they'll, for example, they'll bring me the history, mm -hmm. the medical history of their dog. They'll bring me the x-rays or the MRI. These must be complicated exams because in addition to seeing the patient as if they had just walked in with no previous veterinary care, then you have to unravel all of the work that they've had done maybe at multiple other right. places as they've been on this journey to figure out how to take this non-ambulatory, non-walking right. dog mm -hmm. suffering from chronic mm -hmm. degenerative well, disease. Well, yeah. And please don't everyone, don't everyone believe that I can put in a needle and make all dogs walk or make all dogs better. I think that I can certainly improve an impact on their lives. But those magical things, they've happened a few times, but it's not like sure. I can go ahead and do that all the time, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't want people to look at it like, oh yeah, this'll, this'll resolve things and my dog will be a new dog. Sure. You know, here in Palms, in the Coachella Valley, La Quinta, Palm Springs, it's warm. It's 100 degrees out there today, it feels like. Mm -hmm. um, where, I, where I'm from, it's cold, you know, winter, 15, zero degrees. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of lameness in dogs mm -hmm. when the cold kicks in mm -hmm. and things like that in our senior care. Mm -hmm. um, how does a person figure out if some of these things are, are going to be an option for them? Um, you know, what do you, what do you see? Do you see a, do you, do you see a well dog that maybe is an active athletic dog that just needs a, an mm -hmm. adjustment? Um, you know, or relievance of a blockage. Uh, we talk a little bit about acupuncture. Right, uh, Is it only these older guys and, no. and that just surface throughout the year, whether it's cold or not? You know, I have people that come in that have dogs, for example, that that do endurance horses that uh, do endurance. Yeah. You know, dogs that 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 are actually professional frisbee player yeah love it and so and they're young and vigorous and so they come in you know when they have an issue with n not performing as they had being uncomfortable you know and and so there you're you're trying to be also proactive right yeah. and and you know, like like these pole horses you know um you want to do things to enhance their performance and to help them out, you know, in those moments where they're going to be under under athletic stress mm -hmm. and also with the repercussions sure. of post game. I, you know. I constantly worry um, about this with Timber. You know, we've replaced both knees, not mm -hmm. due to his exercise, but due to conformational problems, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with just the development of his bones. But mm -hmm. uh, both knees, elbows have both been worked on and we do long bike rides and, and a lot of the people that listen to the cast have active athletic dogs and so I'm always mm -hmm. watching, you know, after five miles of really vigorous yeah. running, that's a long ways for a dog. It's pretty um, amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, I, and I always worry, you know, looking for signs of pain and so how can I can you give me any tips for what to look for in a dog um, that might be experiencing some pain and how would I see that you know if I'm watching him or her at home well first of all he must be one hell of a dog you know to be able to do that with all of those orthopedic woes well he's had some great I was gonna care. say probably had some pretty amazing surgeons put yeah. things back together indeed and you are a pretty exceptional dad as far Thank as you. taking care of that guy um yeah. actually we all manifest pain differently right? i kind of tell people sometimes you have these folks that that they have a little bit of a backache you know and they're and they're on a medical leave right. and you have somebody that has the same injury and they still go to work yeah. you know and they get things done and, yeah. and i'm not saying it's wrong sure. yeah. it's just different pain th thresholds yeah. you know and attitudes and such like that so so um as as our dogs cats horses tortoises yes. age right um, there are things you're gonna see they're not perhaps as limber as they used to be you know so maybe whereas they used to 
used to want to run until they drop. Now, you know, they kind of so back off. Slow you know, to get on the couch, right, don't jump exactly. on the bed. You know, you know, they're 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 not sometimes as happy as they normally would be or norm, you know. And it's not that they're unhappy, but they just don't have that same sort of flash in their eye, that same eagerness perhaps to do something that they had always done, you yeah. know. Um, deciding that, yeah, I think I'm gonna kind of sleep in this morning. I don't wanna, you know, bounce up to yeah. go. And it's a very, individual thing and and I and I tell people you know your friend there and if you're getting this twinge that something's not right you're gonna go and investigate things yeah. you're gonna go and see your veterinarian and and in the explanation from you as the parent um, to the veterinarian and in his examination of all these different systems, right, during his exam. There are things that he discovers, and there are things that are actually explained in your history, you the owner, mm -hmm. right? And so the thought is, okay, I'm kind of wondering, he seems like he's got a little bit of muscle atrophy in his right mm -hmm. hind leg, and when I flex that joint, it's range of motion doesn't seem to be as good as the other one and and i think he's a little ouchy and and somebody goes ahead and you're talking a little further right about this history and and you go you go as a veterinarian has he ever been lame before you know on that leg and you, know, you go oh god you know you remember last year we went we went camping honey <laughs> and uh and he came up lame you know and it's just for a couple of days and 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 so those signs point you in the fact that there has been something that's happened and and is maybe is maybe going on in sort of a very slow fashion and it's time let's take a couple x-rays and all of a sudden boom your guy that 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 was this amazing athlete and still has been pretty amazing all of a sudden whoa his hips have some issues yeah Oh, his knee, which is which is basically the most, not all the time, but one of the most common causes of hind limb yeah. lamenesses is torn ACLs. You know? The, you know, and this introduces, I think, for me, a good example of why we're not calling this alternative medicine, but we're calling it complementary or integrative in that now comes into the scene, tr you know, x-rays, which are not a controversial thing to do it's just a great technological tool mm -hmm. that we have available to take an x-ray of a knee or hips mm -hmm. and find out before that dog starts to develop advanced you know osteophytic problems yeah. arthritis right. yeah. and, and other types yeah. of things we can see it and start talking yeah. about yeah. hey your dog's hips are growing in a way that are going to maybe cause mm -hmm. him or her some problems down the road here's what you can do about right. it and so a lot of dogs that come in to me have been worked up like that and are on medications to help out those things. And these folks want to add something else, want to go ahead and try something else in the hope that, that it can enhance quality of life. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and to be used in conjunction mm -hmm. with those things that have been helping, you know, and and so and so then at that stage, I go ahead and I do my chiropractic exam or my acupuncture exam or take a homeopathic history, but that's a little bit of a different story, and and then based on what I find. If we're going down the road of acupuncture, um, I look for certain acupuncture points mm -hmm. on certain meridians. Mm -hmm. The body has a total of 14 meridians, you know, 12 are paired, you know, the other two are not. And, and so they guide me to the kind of areas where things seem to be awry. And um, and I can impact those you know, 
with my needle. Um, and I also, pretty much the majority of time, and this is one of the nice things of having gone along this progression, is that I use both chiropractic and acupuncture at the same treatment because I think, for example, that with the chiropractic and with the acupuncture, they're sort of a synergistic thing and they enhance the response, number one, and seem to enhance the, the, the duration of the benefit that has occurred. So why use them both together? Um, so thinking about meridians um, and energy, right? We're talking about energy flows mm -hmm. throughout the body. And mm -hmm. so um, as Chinese we, call it QI, or, and, and we pronounce it as CHI. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if our chi, we want our chi to be moving through our body freely, mm -hmm. right, doing the things that it's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, uh, I've hurt my back because I sat in a funny position mm -hmm. for too long and I've created a, a muscular response maybe mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's inflaming the tissues and mm -hmm. kind of putting some resistance mm -hmm. to the flow mm -hmm. of the chi. And, yeah. and, and am I getting that right? And so yeah. Then, yeah. And when we think of chi, for example, one of the ways that I describe it um, is that it's supposed to run and to flow unimpeded, right? And it's kind of like an irrigation field in a sense. And you have these gates, what do they call them? Sluice gates? Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. And so, so they're closed and things are obstructed in that point. And so the energy is not going as it should through there, unimpeded. Um, and, and the issue is how does one open that, reopen that, you know, and allow this to happen. And so that's the thought of what we're trying to impact with acupuncture. Um, the, the, Chinese diagnosis, Chinese medicine is, is pretty amazing and, and it is at the same time simplistic, but it's also in, in, incredibly complicated. They've been there at it for are, a couple years. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so for example, arthritis they call bony B syndrome. Okay. And, and actually B, B-I, means to have an obstruction. You know, and that's what what they've called it. And so with these needles, you're trying to impact things. And then with the chiropractic, you are trying to free up where there are fixations, mm -hmm. which can cause the issues that you describe. Also, mm -hmm. the obstruction of chi, mm -hmm. basically, I would call a fixation in chiropractic, where a joint is malaligned mm -hmm. or or a muscle has been pulled and altered your gait and mm -hmm. therefore your balance you know, and and so they're all they're all interlaced together mm -hmm. and 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 once again that's that's the beauty of integrative medicine is is you can impact on multiple levels you know, mm -hmm. and and sort of address the entire creature the 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 holistic creature, you know, with all of his different systems, mental and emotional, besides physical. Mm -hmm. you know, so. so when folks first come in for uh, needlework, um, you know, are they? <laughs> is there a comfort level for that? To, There's a lot of gun know? shy folk <laughs> out there. Needle I mean, shy. we pull out for and vaccines, and you see people turn I, around and right? they don't want to see it. So, how do you over? How do you uh, help people with that? Uh -huh. um, well, this is what I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of oh, acupuncture needles here, <laughs> and I tell them, "Listen, you know, I know, I know needles sometimes can be can be pretty scary." but um, I just want to show you something and, and, and don't think I'm crazy. And so I go ahead and I open up my needle. I don't know if you guys can see that needle yeah, there. Right I, here. I don't know, okay, all right. And so there's a point 
that runs down what's called the governing vessel, which basically runs down the middle of your head all the way down your back to the end. And this point um, is governing vessel, I think it's governing vessel 14. Um, and it's right in the middle of your skull. And so, and so I put in this needle, you know, and, and, um, and I said, <laughs> needle in your you head. know, you know, a needle in my head, you know, it's, um, and you can see uh, it, it, it was not something that was terribly painful based on, you know, and, and so I go, it's going to be okay. And, and the dogs and the horses, you know, there are sometimes, also in humans, there's something that's called day chi, the arrival of chi. And some points can be very, very charged. And you put in the needle, and it's kind of like you've whacked your elbow, you've whacked your funny bone, uh -huh. you know, and it'll make you jump. And so for you or I, it's kind of whoa, yeah. And a dog or a horse might go, holy mackerel, whoa, <laughs> you yeah. know. And but but I would say, for example, that they deal with things very very well, you know. Um, and it's not unusual. I don't know if you've ever had acupuncture, no. or any of the folks watching have ever had it, but it's not unusual to get a pretty amazing endorphin release. And that's one of the things that happens with putting in a needle. You know, you actually get a local effect mm -hmm. and you stimulate nerve pathways, which is where this chi runs, and you will get a very potent endorphin release, which are basically the body's natural painkillers. A lot of dogs fall asleep. I, my wife was out at the polo field with me once and I was treating a horse that was really, really muscle sore, you know, and really uncomfortable. And um, so I put some needles in her and, and I was talking with the owner about the match and, this and, that. and my wife goes, Kevin, did, did you give him something? And this horse, his head was like down around his <laughs> knees, like I had given him a sedative, yeah. you know, um, which would have that sort of effect sure. where somebody looks a little bit stoned and sure. under the influence. And, yeah. and that was the endorphin release yeah. in that horse, you know. And, and so, um, and there'll be dogs that actually fall asleep. I've had owners fall asleep and the dogs are sleeping. I come in the room and the owner's dozing over here. The dog's <laughs> on his pillow is down there. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. We'll um, give him another 20 minutes. Right, exactly. And we'll <laughs> I'll come back later. Uh, oh, that's um, fantastic. Um, um, and then when you're doing this work, um, it, is it multiple needles if yeah. you're working a meridian or mm -hmm. do you, multiple meridians? It's actually like, multiple meridians okay. and multiple needles. You know. There are some people that use many, many needles. I try to to use the minimum amount you know, um, that will address that particular issue. And there, there are different schools of acupuncture. You know, where they use more needles or where for example they use more needle stimulation mm -hmm. and they're moving that needle and poking it back and forth which which can be pretty aggressive and where you might understand listen you know this is going to hurt burn a little bit but it's it'll be over and you're going to feel better oh, i'm going to unblock this area it's kind of hard to tell that to a dog sure. or a horse or a cat, um, but um, there are there are certainly different approaches, you know, which are all beneficial in their own way. Yeah, and I imagine um, 
being calm and being controlled is a, mm -hmm. is a good environment. So I'm assuming that these therapies are taking place in an exam room no, as no. versus like just openly in a treatment room. Maybe No, we usually a, actually use this room is okay. the acupuncture room. How long does a typical therapy take? Um, I'm sure it's patient dependent. The needles are in pretty much 20 minutes. Oh. Then I'll take out the needles. And then I go to phase two, the chiropractic aspect. I mix up something that I make myself out of essential oils, mm -hmm. witch hazel, DMSO. Okay. I call it trauma solution. Okay. And um, it also has things like lavender in it, that oil. And so it in itself is calming. And actually the oils um, have effects to relax muscles, to improve circulation, to relieve spasms, and um, and it's it's actually a type of aromatherapy. Also, mm. it's also local massage. I actually massage yeah, that in to the that. dog yeah. or the cat or the horse. Well, not cats. I don't use essential oils in cats because they have a different way of reacting to them. Um, but horses they love it and and so I'll I'll go ahead and massage in that um, and then I will go ahead and adjust the dog and in the style that I do it I'm usually if it's a large dog I'm on the floor with them I'm actually standing over them a lot of times I'm standing over their back so I can get at their neck to get at their atlas mm -hmm. and adjust their atlas and then work my way down and then I'm on my hands and knees and I'm rotating their spine and that's pretty much how I do that. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking about massage in general and I'm thinking about horses and, you know, just because it's a larger example, but these giant muscle structures and, and I think about how I feel when someone's, when I'm getting a massage and it's more than just someone pushing on your muscles there's a there's a positive sensation that's mm -hmm. happening throughout your whole body and i can imagine just combining that with some needlework some adjustment of some fixed mm -hmm. joints where mm -hmm. joints aren't moving so well just just really allowing that chi to redevelop its, its and, and and i think that that all veterinarians have have intention in their medicine and in their handling and in their touching of their patients. And I think chiropractic is a, is, is a real beautiful way to go ahead with your intention to help to pass that through your hands. Yeah. And, and I think that that energy is something that the animal feels or the person feels yeah. based on the healing that, that, that this other creature, the two-legged creature wants to do to help out the four-legged creature. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it's amazing, and 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 so you see these you see these patients that um, are coming in in all stages of life, We're coming in for lots of different care. I'm assuming that a a, a larger percentage are are patients that have been down and other roads and maybe aren't mm -hmm. getting the results they want. Mm -hmm. So now they show up to you and then you can deploy what you can deploy. But these are probably more senior oriented or animals with advanced disease right, exactly. process. Exactly. Which brings me to a, a different topic, um, which is kind of end of life care. Mm -hmm. um, I know you and I both are very passionate about this mm -hmm. topic. And so I, I would be remiss if I didn't take advantage of right. my time with you to, mm -hmm. to get some thoughts on yeah. this. Um, mm -hmm. Can you share with us a little bit about um, how does that process, what is that process for you? Just I'll go anywhere you. you want with us. The word euthanasia comes from the Greek and it means a good death. And in those situations with our animal family, um, we do everything we can to, to to go ahead and save them from disease, cure them from disease. Um, and there are certain processes that we cannot cure. And then that puts us in this other mode of where we do everything we can to give them the quality of life that they deserve. And when we've done all of that, 
and that quality of life is passing and we know that it's passing um, there's there's this moment when we're on what I call the emotional roller coaster right? where first of all no one I don't think any of us deal well with death be it in ourselves or in the animals around us that we love and and that's something that we probably need to work on but it's 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 not an easy thing to confront and to deal with um, but there comes that moment where okay I gotta tell you about my dog Chomper you know? I thought he would pass when he was 13, and he went on to 16, mm -hmm. but I got on the emotional roller coaster, because mm -hmm. I'm human too, you know? and, and so there would be days when Chomper would not be having a good day, and he couldn't really get around, and of course I had thrown the kitchen sink sure, at him, everything yeah. I could think of, because I'm the veterinarian. Yeah. I should be able to save my dog, to make my dog okay, right? That's what I'm supposed to do. And so I, I'm picking Chomper up, and taking him outside. He was not a small dog. The laboratory weighed a fair amount of money. Um, weighed fair a, amount of weight. a fair amount, and and. Um, and I knew, in my heart, I, he was telling me, you know, I, I, I don't know, Kevin, I, I think maybe I don't want to be here, right? And so it was, you know, and I would say, you know, Chomp, you know, maybe if we do this, you might feel a little better, and, and he kind of would look at me, and, Okay, all right, and got, got to the point where I had made the decision, I told my kids, <laughs> my son got Chomper when he was two, and he was now, at that time, Marco was 18, and this dog had lived His life with him, discovered it, remember. exactly, and, oh, and I said, you know, and, and, and I told Melissa, and I told my wife. Melissa's younger, but she, and and he had always been there, right? That it's time, I think, to send Chomper on his journey, right? And I think we'll we'll do it tonight, tomorrow night, or whatever date. And I would come home. Chomper looked a little better. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything. They wouldn't say anything, and you got back on the roller coaster. You know? And I think it's so natural for us as human beings, caring beings, right? ones who cannot think of the death of their loved ones. It's, it's, it's not possible. Um, <laughs> have to go ahead and, and, and go, what's right for my friend, you know? Um, I have given him and we give them every chance. And I would want somebody, give me my chance before you pull the plug on me. Um, I, want, I want to try, and if I can't make it, I can't grab that ring. Yeah. Then you send me on my journey. I'm okay, you know. Um, and that's also maybe a complicating factor because then you're kind of going, I'm on this emotional roller coaster for the greatest of reasons. Yeah. For the love that I have for this creature, and we have to step back, and we have to listen to our hearts. And our head, a lot of times, overrules our heart. And and there comes that time that it's time to let my friend go. And I consider euthanasia, and I've said it recently several times, and I think this is probably the first year that I've, that I've actually said that, 
and it it's come from I've always felt that um, that euthanasia might be the most important thing that I do which which sounds sort of antithetical you're supposed to save lives um, you're supposed to keep your patients living right and and to say that euthanasia is something that's that's so important I consider it right it's 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 actually very sacred and it is the most <laughs> awesome overwhelming moment in our lives with the animals that we love and cherish and and it's it's because it has that effect and 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 those ramifications you know um i find that that i mean i have patients that i've had since you know they were puppies or they were they were orphan babies and people you know have had them and and the you know it's so intertwined with the rest of their lives you know somebody comes in and this dog is the last link to their husband yes right yep and so and so it is not just this moment and it's not just this interaction this is my history and you reawaken and relive the grief of having lost yeah. you know I can remember somebody <laughs> reliving it right the now the dog was their kid uh, their kid's dog you know and um and their kid had died, you know, taken away in 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 the worst of situations. The death of a child in any situation. And and this woman, that dog was her son. Yeah. I I have my moments of losing it sometimes you know it's which is which is which is very easy to do it's you know? part of it and um and and like you say it's it's it is it is a part and parcel of 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 passing for for all of us you know and and so and so that that i think makes those moments the most important sometimes you know that that I can somehow shepherd those dogs horses tortoises yeah. on their road and also even more importantly in that moment because the animal is going to be free yeah. to go on whichever road they're going on the Pope says all of them are going to heaven <laughs> and I'm with the Pope I'm with the Pope and but the two-legged person they are so hurt and they are injured that that we have to go ahead and be able to help them shepherd them down this road and i mean we we know i don't know it's like the five steps of grief yeah. and and um people go through those with their animals and and it is not unusual at all to get locked in one of those stages we all make that passage eventually eventually um, but some eventuallys are very 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 long and and it can be an overwhelming crisis in in the human's life you know? and and we as caregivers have to be and are aware I think I think veterinarians are are incredibly empathetic you know? and 
going down this next road, the, the health and the emotional well-being of these veterinarians and that are staff. sending and the staff, that reverberates you know, through the whole clinic and through everybody's life and the intricacies of that individual life. Um, because it opens up all of these old emotions, yeah. you know, and, and, and you know when it's happened here, you know, and, and, and we, the people that work here, and, and basically share the passage of these creatures, you know, we need to be there for each other. Uh, and, and, it's, there are some moments and there are some animals that might remind you of, you know, this guy reminds you of the pit bull I had, you know, and oh my God, it's like, it, it, it's like you're there again, you know, and with every euthanasia, you are there, you know, and, and, and it's, it's something that, that you have to learn to balance, but sometimes it's so heavy to balance. It's such a it's such a concerning, intriguing, and in depth topic. And as a non veterinarian, you know, my, um, thirty years for me now, a big bulk of that was working in emergency medicine, and I really got a taste of it because it was trauma all the time, uh -huh. and you know you. And so as a non-veterinarian, I saw opportunities for myself to be able to be very impactful for owners, and that's mm -hmm. something that really moves me. And, and I think, with very few exceptions, most people that come into veterinary medicine on the as an employee, whether as a doctor or whatnot, you probably got into it because you had a deep desire to help animals, no. and and suddenly you're you're faced with also helping owners, and uh, and so here were folks and often, helping yourself. Well, the that's the that's that the thing. You work within your circle, right? Yeah, and I don't that's think people. I don't think people that if you don't work in veterinary medicine, you may not really appreciate. And why should you? How much euthanasia has to happen? Mm -hmm. And in one regard, that's terrifying and sad. But in another regard, it's very important. As you were talking about, this is probably the most important thing we do is help transition mm -hmm. not only that being into the next plane, but also helping those family members who don't deal with this every day figure out how to how to deal with this how to make this choice when have i waited too long i have i've done 20 years in the business i waited too long on a kidney failure cat that i owned and i and i learned a lot from that and now when i meet people who are dealing with a kidney failure kind of end of life conversation i i'm the first one in the room to say let me help you understand this and let me help you feel okay about how you're going to make this decision and mm -hmm. when you're going to make it right. because I have my own personal story right. in this yeah. and, and, right. I, and I don't want people that go through what I went through in that and, I, and here's my opportunity to help them. When you're a helper type personality and you just want to help people and you haven't had that exposure, constantly working through euthanasias, it's a really overwhelming mm -hmm state because so, you take that owner's mm -hmm. emotions right you're already an empathetic person and so here you have a family and often clients will come in and they have their whole family right everybody's there mm -hmm. they're not a veterinarian that can go home and do it at home so yeah. they got to bring the whole family yeah. into a foreign place mm -hmm. in a in an exam type mm -hmm. room and 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 be able to figure this yeah. out and then yeah. you've got your your staff that are you know We've all shed an awful lot of tears yeah. in the exam room. And then what do we do with that? Mm -hmm. What's the mental health status of our people who have really PTSD? Oh, exactly. Right? Uh, You're secondary uh, yeah. involved, um, whether it's trauma or chronic disease or whatever the case may be. And I worry a lot. We we talked about this in over the last couple of days and just care for ourselves and, and, and care for our veterinarians and newer graduates or newer just employees that come in. Um, we're really sensitive where I work to, to try to spend time 
with new employees to understand this process? Um, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's incredibly sad and tragic to think that in the veterinary profession, you know, that there are three times more suicides now than there had been in veterinarians. And it's also the veterinary staff, yeah, the rest of the team, right. you know, is doing that. And, and it's, it's so unbelievable to see that, that people that care to that degree right, um, and have dedicated their lives to helping and healing, and when they can't do that, being the individuals that they have, with the heart and the empathy that they have, um, that takes its toll, you know, and, and, and not being able to save someone, to save an animal for that family that's yeah. here, you know, and you have to go out and somehow explain to kids. It's hard enough to explain it to adults, you know, and, and, and so for veterinarians, um, that, that's incredibly reverberating through them and through their hearts and yeah. you know it's I feel like it's important for all of us to maintain a, a position of celebration when we're transitioning these mm -hmm. animals mm -hmm. um, and shepherding them to the next phase mm -hmm. and, and recognize that you know whatever the situation we we really have an animal that's either made it a long way through mm -hmm. life which is mm -hmm. great or overcome mm -hmm. a difficult disease as long as they could and that it's it's okay now right. it's okay mm -hmm. um, and and in fact it's a good thing to help them mm -hmm. because it's one of the most important things that we can do and yeah. I think it's the hardest thing as an yeah. owner yeah. is you have to make that choice your, your patient isn't mm -hmm. going to make that choice yeah. and that's a that's tough on everybody to be in that position and you that's also a moment or a time because it's not just a moment it's usually many moments that that being being the veterinarian being the veterinary team that that we're there as you are with with guiding people with kidney disease so so owners can go ahead and and go help me what what do I do? What can I do? You know, how can I know? You know and um, and, and uh, what will it look like? I feel right. like that's the thing that that is helpful for me is to try to yeah. talk to that owner before that time to say, here's quality of life may mm -hmm. be a good way for you to know if your mm -hmm. if your friend is not eating, mm -hmm. is not drinking, mm -hmm. is weight shifting mm -hmm. seems uncomfortable mm -hmm. then then now their quality of life yeah. may not they may be alive mm -hmm. and we can keep them alive longer mm -hmm. but what's that quality yeah. of that life going to be and and if it's not going to be a life that you yourself would want to live then i think it's fair mm -hmm. at that at that time to to make that decision mm -hmm. thinking that way dr fenton what if i'm an owner that's looking at this option right now what can I expect when I arrive at an animal hospital? Can you can you tell us a little bit about like what actually sure, happens? Sure, sure. Um, this is how I have and do things. It's 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 been an evolution, mm -hmm. and so we'll talk. Um, so if this is somebody that I've not seen, but the majority of times these are people that I have a relationship with. And we'll sit down and we'll have that conversation. And we've probably already had it. Um, many times it's the elephant in the room mm -hmm. as we're in the, on the roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. right? and, and we sit down and we talk about it's time now and it's the right thing and it's and it's a way to go ahead and release somebody lovingly and so what happens 
is we place an IV catheter in the leg. And then we come back here. This is actually the room, you know. Um, I've sent many, many creatures on their road in here. Sacred in, space. In, including my own, mm. some of them. Mm. And, um, and we place the catheter. And I burn sage at every, every time I send somebody on their journey. To cleanse or? Uh, to, it, it, it's something that helps me. Mm -hmm. It's something that helps the animal that's about to make his journey. And it's something that helps the parent. Um, and, and I say a prayer as I basically sage everybody. Mm -hmm. you know. um, and I'm not going to say it because I'm probably that's all right. again. <laughs> and um, and then what I do, the first stage, is I give a sedative. Okay. Right. And it's a pretty potent sedative. And it relaxes them very deeply. And they're usually in the lap, sure. on dad. If it's a big old kid, we're on the floor, sure. all of us, on a blanket, you know. Um, and and then once again at that moment you're you're ready to go to the next to the next level which is the final level and again it's at that moment it's still so hard for all of us and and so um, and and then the second injection that is given right is is kind of like you're you're taking a rheostat on a light and you're turning it down and off and and what that does is it is it turns down the cardiac center mm -hmm. it turns down the respiratory center mm -hmm. uh, and someone slowly slips away mm -hmm. um, and it's it happens within a couple of minutes, you know, um, and it can be overwhelming in that moment to be with someone as they pass. You know. um, I tell folks that that his eyes won't close, and the way that I've come to be able to deal with that is, I think. They're looking at where they're going, where they're <laughs> leaping. So their eyes are open, right. and that's what they're doing. As we would all like to you be. Know? Yeah. Um, and, um, and they'll begin to breathe much harder. You know? And, and, um, and I, I should remember when we pass that, that all of our muscles are still quote unquote alive. Our, heart has stopped, so therefore our circulation has stopped. Um, brain activity. Our, our brain is gone. We're already on our way. Respiration uh, has stopped. But, for example, the diaphragm is a large muscle. It contracts and somebody looks like they're breathing. And that, too, can be very unsettling and scary. Mm -hmm. and but these are just the normal right. articulations right. of the body. Right, of the passage, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, um, and, and then it's happened and, and we're there and, and, um, and they're overwhelmed. Um, and and I, I look at them and, and I, I say, I give hugs to everybody. And, so I, I hug them, both of them, um, all of them, whoever is in that room. Yeah. And, um, and I tell them, listen, you know, your friend is free. He's free and easy. You know? And it was the right thing for you to do, as hard as it was, mm -hmm. to ever think that you would have to. Mm -hmm. um, and I look at them and I go, listen, you guys are the guys now that are suffering mm -hmm. and you have to support each other in 
this moment because no one knows what it's going to be like in the unfolding of, of, of dealing with that loss mm-hmm. and you guys have to be there for each other mm-hmm. and I say have a toast to your friend tonight and I say maybe you'll need a couple of toasts yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, um, and I say you can stay here as long as you want mm-hmm. you, when, when you're ready you go so, and and then of course what's happened already is somebody has decided what they want to do with the sure. with this creature who's yeah. their who's their love of their life and and so cremation is what what we've done mm-hmm. and and there's that option if somebody wants to have the the individual ashes sure, back, you yeah. know. I mean, I have ashes from multiple. I have, I have my mother's ashes under a tree, which yeah. she revived, and I have multiple dogs and lizards and a snake under trees and bushes, you yeah. know, at home. And, uh, Love it, you know. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I have a little plastic baggie with a green tie with some of my mother's ashes still in the closet. Mm-hmm. So if the house starts burning down, I know where she is because she's going with me. <laughs> you know? yeah. When my father passed, the ashes of his dogs all went in the coffin with him. That's you fantastic. Know? And, and uh, so it's... Uh, you say it's a journey and it's a it's a dark journey but it's it's a journey that brings peace and it brings eventual and I don't know how long that eventual is um, ability to know and feel that yes I gave my friend their freedom and I'm okay yeah because they're okay Thank you for all of the times that you've helped these yeah. animals. Yeah. And That's you fantastic. too. I appreciate it. Right? We do you. it all together. Yeah, we right? do it together. And sometimes it sucks. Yeah. Uh-huh. It never gets easier yeah, though, does right? it? Yeah. <sighs> well, so uh, so hug your staff for me and let them know how much I appreciate them. I remember the first days swinging in when you were down the street here. Yeah, all right. And, you know, in uh-huh. that little spot there. Yeah. And, um, and all those players and That's over right. the years things yeah. have grown for you and that's yeah. really exciting yeah. and but through it all in every location that we've we've been a part of you and I you know there's there are, there's staff in there you know they are they're our family help, they're helping yeah. us do it that's right that's they're right. our family, they're right? family. Right? and I really appreciated myself some familiar faces that's today right. when we yeah. got here and it was yeah. pretty exciting yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it means the world to me yeah. um, that you guys would open up the place and, and uh, we could have this talk um, you're part of it too man I appreciate that <laughs> I appreciate that well what uh, what can we tell folks if they want to get in touch with you are you available for clients new clients sure. um, mm-hmm. and so they just can look you up on the online right, right. for well first you know they can always call the clinic here mm-hmm. um, do you want the phone number sure or yeah that'd be 760-564-1154 that's great that you know it <laughs> in this day and oh, age yeah. with cell phones right, right? You know. and you can email uh, there are amazing things that are beyond my technological <laughs> capabilities but folks out there you'll be amazed yourself yeah uh, well I, I would and say I wish you luck and I hope you're not technologically impaired like me you're getting through it though yeah, right, got a team, no, right? I've gotten better I've gotten better so you know and um, and then as far as for example what I do outside of the clinic um, I have a website which I think is www.drkevinsark A-R-K mm-hmm. all one word dot com. Um, I, <laughs> I am embarrassed to say everybody that I started with these great expectations <laughs> a 
website and this and that and and um, and I haven't really been paying a lot of attention to it and but if if people want to I certainly would try to your strengths dr. Fenton are in your honesty your human connection which is as great as your animal connection Thank you've you. moved me many times over the years and I would put you in the group of fierce defenders of your teams mm -hmm. and people and and doing what is fair and what is right and uh, I didn't come here today to talk to you because you're an IT specialist with a you know, great <laughs> website, right? Yeah. So we, we have people it's for that. It's pretty cool. But, yeah. <laughs> so so if, you, if you have some questions and you're interested and you want to set up an exam, um, you know, VCA All Creatures uh, in La Quinta or Dr. Kevin's Ark um, online are both places where, where they can reach yeah, out and yeah. find their way to yeah, exactly. you. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that would be we'll great. We'll try to figure but, out something. Yeah, yeah but I uh, really appreciate you. Right. And, uh, Thanks and again, thank man. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, dude, oh, we need to get a hug. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you know what we forgot? What? We forgot to talk about Trapdoor. Oh, well, we have think, a few minutes for sure. Yeah, can we should talk about Trapdoor. All right, so we were going to talk We were going to talk about some cases, favorite cases over the years um, that you've dealt with. And in addition to the integrative work that you do uh, you see a, lo a tremendous amount of exotics mm -hmm. as we hinted at right so huh? turtles uh, snakes iguanas uh, anything zebra, zoo animals zebra uh, camels that. yeah so please tell us about trapdoor because um, he was on the list right, right? yeah right. let's go guys. should should yeah. i point here yeah or go ahead I... yeah go ahead because i'll probably upload uh some some of the pictures yeah, okay. as well so people could see it all right well here's here's my man trapdoor and so Trapdoor came in, and he was actually, is actually, is still around, owned by a woman that works for the post office. Okay. And uh, she has a dog that decided that Trapdoor, that was not his name when he came in, I don't remember, but he is now Trapdoor. <laughs> um, he ended up being a chew toy for uh -oh. this dog. <laughs> and so in this picture, Trapdoor, who was probably he was probably about eight months old, right? even though he looks very tiny. Um, that's actually a little syringe, a tuberculin syringe. I probably should have put a pen there. but And that's a piece of gauze that's over something. Ah. And... Oh, hey. Don't get grossed out, everybody. <laughs> that is Trapdoor's stomach. <laughs> And this is actually white sildidine and antibiotic cream that was on that, which was um, covered over by the gauze. Okay. And so what had happened was the tooth of this dog, and this tortoise's shell is reasonably soft because he's young, he's and in, also uh, because he had some issues with his calcium metabolism, uh, right, um, had popped through. Well, so, so... What do you do? I don't know. I kind of figured, well, let's try this. And so what I did, um, he's under anesthesia. All right. And what we're doing is I cut in between the scoots, which are actually those little pieces that interdigitate in the shell. They're okay. called scoots. Okay. All right. And so what I did was I cut one and I picked it up and I created a trap door. <laughs> And so then, what I could do is push his stomach back in there, right? Hoping that when it got back it in there, it would go it where it had to go. Please, <laughs> God, put it where it's supposed to go. Okay? And so then, one of the nice things about um. his age and his shell is it was pretty soft. And so literally, I could take suture, suture material, and go ahead and close it. Wow. All right? And I called it battening down the hatch. Right. And so, there we is. got finished, All right? That was my dear tech who's gone um, years ago, and and, um, and we, 
went ahead and woke this guy up. Here's here's hey. what things look like. Oh, all right. Wow. And away he went. Um, I think that's the last one. Yeah, right? that's amazing. Oh, yeah. And, and oh. so then he went on to live a happy... He went on to live, but happy. guess what happened years later? Uh-oh. Who happened? His buddy again at home. Oh, oh no. <laughs> right. Oh no. Was, wasn't as bad. Wasn't as bad. But he got him. <laughs> so we didn't have to go to that degree of doing things. And, and his poor mom said, Oh, I'm so sorry, doctor. I said, I'm, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. You know, I mean, my happen. God, you know. These things happen. If it All weren't right. for accidents, veterinary hospitals may not even be around. That's right. right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. What kind of turtle is he or tortoise is he? He is a desert tortoise. Okay. Mm-hmm. No? And so, am I, if I'm remembering correctly, so you can age them for a little while. Right, but then once they reach yeah, kind of their kind adult of size, then because it's hard it really know. depends on on how hard their life has been, how well they've eaten, have they been exposed to enough sunlight? As so, far as right, size you know, and exactly. Yeah, you know, okay. So it's kind of hard. You can't really age them by their teeth like you could in a horse or a dog. And there's no counting the the, no, uh, the no, shell, no. right? It doesn't uh, have anything to uh, do with that. Uh, Amazing. Well, Trapdoor, uh, we're super happy to know uh, that that, uh, uh, that, that uh, happened. Uh, uh, and if you want to know more, there's a giant book here that was put together <laughs> full of all these amazing cases over, By a, him. <laughs> a, over a very a, a very long and exciting yeah, career. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, a lot of cool. stuff in there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A lot of stuff in there. All right, all right my friend. Well, okay. thank you very much. All right. we'll, uh, we'll see you out there. You know what? I just realized I better take this needle out of my head. <laughs> yeah. That's usually what happens. I walk around with it in the clinic. At least you didn't go, fall asleep Dr. or Fen- drift off Dr. during Fen- the- Do you know you have a needle in your head? <laughs> Honestly, I was a little worried you might lean back <laughs> against right. the wall and get a little right. deeper. Uh, and get, and get <laughs> my endorphin release. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, All very right. good. Well, thanks, thanks. a lot. Thank I appreciate you, you very Thank much. You. Well, that's it for today's show. I really hope you enjoyed it. A big thanks to Dr. Fenton for making himself available and to his staff for accommodating our setup in the hospital there. Um, If you are interested in making an appointment to see Dr. Fenton for small animal and exotic needs, you can look him up online at uh, VCA All Creatures uh, in La Quinta. And for large animal and other uh, larger species, uh, you can find him at drkevinsark.com. If you prefer to give him a call, you can do that at 760-564-1140. Uh, as always and if you'd like to give me some feedback which I would appreciate greatly you can email me directly at craig at the podlife.com that's p-a-w-d and finally please stay tuned for our future episodes next up we've got Dr. Kim De La Peza she's going to be talking with us about uh, the veterinary emergency of bloat uh, how to spot it how to prevent it and what you're looking at if your pet happens to find himself in that situation so should be very interesting and I'm really excited to get that one out Uh, so we look forward to seeing you again out there real soon thanks a lot and uh, appreciate all your support have a great day